The Marvel Cinematic Universe has undergone a dramatic shift. The introduction of Disney Plus has enabled shows like WandaVision and Falcon and the Winter Soldier to become key parts of the MCU's fourth phase. Whereas before we were limited to the usual two to two and a half hour runtime of a film, the introduction of episodic serials permitted further development for some unexposed characters. Watching Black Widow a few weeks back, I found myself wishing for a longer runtime as my yearn for character development and world building simply outweighs my urge to use the toilet. However, Disney Plus's most recent offering, Loki, is a shining example of how a series can be used as a way of exploring character, whilst also setting up large-scale events that will pay off in later installments. Tom Hiddleston's Loki has been on our screens for many years, from his first appearance in Thor to his seemingly final destination in Infinity War. His character arc throughout those films has arguably been one of the most compelling in the MCU, with the God of Mischief undergoing an evident transformation from his first appearance to his last. Now I'll admit, I had my reservations when it became clear that Loki's escape in Endgame would lead to a spin-off series that would pretty much expunge eight years of character development, but it's testament to writers Michael Waldron, Bisha K. Ali, and Alyssa Karasik that I soon forgot about that bugbear. In the end, Loki becomes a beautifully crafted series that explores self-reflection, deception, and ultimately, betrayal. Now, Loki is far from perfect. As with each show that has aired exclusively on Disney+, Plus, there tends to be some long-winded scenes that ignore the arrive late, leave early rule. But in general, the show maintains a consistent pace that feels fresh and exciting. The dynamic deployed between characters is a particular highlight, with Loki and Sylvie's relationship feeling genuinely awkward at times, as well as Loki's interactions with Mobius gradually feeling more heartwarming. However, the show is at its most compelling when exploring Loki's selfish attributes, the scene in which he watches the events of his life play out in front of him, leading to his eventual death at the hands of Thanos, is excellently crafted and performed with perfection. It's in these moments that I most value the use of TV shows within the MCU, as we can linger on certain moments for a near uncomfortable period of time, experiencing genuine emotion alongside the characters. I could sit here and laud how the series uses the source material increasingly well to inform its final twist, but I'll leave that to the comic book experts. Instead, I want to focus on how the series moulds its protagonist from an entitled god into something that almost feels human. When we meet Loki, he's just been beaten by the Avengers. Transporting himself away from his troubles via the Tesseract, Loki showcases the maniacal and conniving qualities that the character possessed during his first two on-screen appearances. However, as we progress through the series, we peel back the curtain on Loki's emotions, discovering the true source of his villainy. I'll level with you, Avengers Infinity War is my favourite instalment thus far in the MCU, and the reason behind that boils down to the fact that it was shaped around Thanos, rather than the heroes. This exploration of villainous motives is a compelling new trend, showcased to perfection in other films such as Joker. Loki follows a similar path. Whilst Tom Hilson's character may end up as the hero, he starts out as an unreliable narrator, as we have already seen what his villainy is capable of. Loki's true nature is revealed in three key moments. His interactions with Sylvie, his time loop confrontation with Sif, and his exchanges with fellow variants towards the end of the show. Now whilst Alligator Loki may not provide the perfect parallel, the rest of the variants portray resistant versions of himself, linking back to the kind of character that Loki was at the start of the show. The only variant of Loki that provides any hope is classic Loki, brilliantly played by Richard E. Grant, and we all know what happens to him. In his interactions with Sylvie and Sif, we understand how the God of Mischief regrets the actions of his past. Sif's quarrel with Loki, whilst petty in the grand scheme of things, provides a snippet of Loki's main flaw. Even when faced with those he could call a friend, he continually feels the urge to betray or repel them. Sif's line, you'll always be alone, is a resonant line that rings true to the essence of Loki. Sylvie and Loki find one another, but by virtue of who they are, they can never be together. It's in this exploration of character flaws that I feel Loki truly shines. 
You can ponder all you want about a multiverse, but Marvel Studios have continually showcased that a large-scale universe means nothing unless you care about the characters within it. Loki not only allows us to explore a deeper side to a much-loved character, it also provides the first steps into the multi-year oblivion we are about to enter. With Loki and Sylvie likely having major roles to play in the future of the MCU, it's important to understand who they are and why they act in the way that they do. The gut-wrenching reality of Loki's first series is that Sylvie and Loki were never meant to end up together, but that leaves the audience with a desire, something that carried Marvel's intrigue and majesty throughout their first three phases. The very nature of a connected universe is still somewhat new, and many have tried and failed to replicate what Marvel has achieved. While some seek to downplay the cinematic qualities of such films, I would politely disagree that the essence of cinema is to immerse the audience in the story and provide an element of escapism. Loki provides that in spades. Whilst the core emotions of the character lays closer to home, the large-scale impact on an intergalactic and multiversal scale could raise the corners of even the most stubborn mouths. Ultimately, Marvel are starting to build a universe of delight and wonder, and their initial offerings in this new phase have showcased that they are on course to break minds and records once again. It is within Loki that we see the very best side of the MCU. A show about love and loss, a show that touches on all of our innate desires to rewrite elements of our past, a show that builds and develops a universe into something much bigger than we ever could have dreamt of. Loki may not be a perfect show, but it's a shining example of how different mediums can be used to create intimate character studies, something that will only serve to better the longevity of Marvel's cinematic universe. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please feel free to like, share and subscribe to Page to Screen. I'm Matt, and I'll see you soon.